Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another live stream. It's Therapy Settings over here as we are still reeling from being knocked out of the FA Cup again by Manchester City again in slightly more embarrassing fashion than last time. But it's great to be back. Big up to the chat. Big up to everybody just locked in. Um, sub to Mando's football link is in the title. Link is in the description as well. And big up to Goonie, man. It's great to have you back on the channel, man. How's everything been? How's everything been? All, all good, all good. I just wish it was uh, a better circumstance when it comes to our club. Um, but obviously, before we get on to Chelsea, I do want to say unlucky to Coventry City. I'm saying that because my, my stepdad, my mum and my sister were at the game, innit? My stepdad is a lifelong Coventry City fan. So, Damn, like, really? Yeah, he is. He is. It's been over 50 years he's been supporting them. But I did say, I did say to United fans and I said to Saeed, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Just because they're in the championship, it's not going to be easy. Mark Robbins, Mark Robbins is a very, very good manager. He loses key players every season and he still manages to, to pull something out of the back. So, yeah, man, I'm so unfortunate for the cov. I was I was hoping it was going to go through to the final. Obviously, against Manchester City is a completely different proposition. But it would have been nice to see them dump United out of the semi-final. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like at 3-3, free, free, I thought, raw, we've actually got a game in here. And I was gassed. But then I also, I always end up thinking of everything from a Chelsea perspective. And if Coventry went through, I'd enjoy it for the banter perspective. But now I'd just be thinking, we had, we had such a great opportunity. Coventry City in the FA Cup final. Although I say that, like, yeah. knowing us, is that even an easy opportunity for us? This is what I'm trying to say. I think we would also struggle against them as well because they've got one thing that we don't, and that's resilience. And you've seen it in the last quarterfinals. They, they, they did the same thing. I think they were 2-0 down to Wolves up to like the 80-something minute and they came back at 1-3-2. Down to the 80-something minute again today, they came back from 3-0 and pulled it back 3-3. That is elite level resilience. Yeah, and like for Chelsea, I doubt if we can even spell resilience the way that we've been playing this season. But bro, 24 hours removed from that game. If I had a little bit of time to let the result fester and let the performances fester. How are you feeling coming out of that game? Uh, Lewis, I'll, I'll be honest, bruv. Um, you see, if this was our first time experiencing such a disappointment like that, then... I will probably still be fuming and reeling right now. But I feel the last several times that we've played in Wembley, we've seen the same thing happen over and over and over again. And for me, I know, I listen, I know how you feel about the manager. I'm very much in agreement that Pochettino needs to go. But yeah. I think a lot of people are putting a lot of blame on the manager when me personally, this time round, I'm not pointing fingers at him. Yes, he could have made a couple better decisions instead of keeping Conor Gallagher at left mid and one or two other, you know, tactical decisions that he made. I can't help but look beyond one person for the reason why we are not in the final. And that guy is Nicholas Jackson. Now, a lot of people know how I feel about him. But I think if we're being fair and we look at it, this is not a scapegoat. This man had three opportunities and these are clear cut pinpoint opportunities that he really should have scored. And he let us down all three times. How yeah, many, I agree. man. Uh, you, you're, you're preaching to the choir with this one. Like, first thing I've been saying on all the streams since that game, because I know a lot of people think I have this Pochettino agenda. And like, I know I've been ha heavily against his brother throughout the season. But even I will hold my hands up and say, he coached a victory in this match. He set us up well defensively. The decisions that he made, whether I agreed with them or not at the time, they were working. Like, our problem was application. Our problem was IQ. Our problem was decision making. And I could look to more than just Jackson for that as well. But like, Nicholas Jackson is going to be the one that everyone looks at first and foremost because you had the opportunities. And it's you also didn't even play badly it wasn't a zero out of ten you showed good facets of your game it's just for all the confidence that you showed in your ball carrying your 1v1s when it when it comes to driving the ball forward from defense to attack your strength on the ball for all the confidence that you had there where's the confidence when you're one-on-one -on -one with the keeper no it's true and and here's my thing you know um chelsea ccp in the chat he's saying 
it's Jackson's fault we conceded what but look no we're not saying that no I'm, that's not what I'm saying but when you look at it from a from a bigger picture by the time we conceded that goal we should have been three nil up by that point or a bare minimum two nil up by that point so that wouldn't have really mattered if they had scored it's Manchester City they're gonna score they're going to score goals. More times than none, they said more times out of 10, they score goals against opposition. But we would have outscored them. Now, the point is, right, that I'm emphatically trying to make here is that when you're in any kind of knockout competitions, whether it's quarterfinals, Champions League or whatever, I personally don't care if my striker gets two or three touches a half. But when that moment presents itself to, to have a smash and grab and you put that ball in the back of the net, that's all I care about. Because it's not always the best team that wins the game. And you saw that yesterday. It's about who's going to take their opportunities to make it into the next round. It doesn't matter if you play like shit. As long as you do your job and put the ball in the back of the net. This is why I'm so frustrated with Jackson. I've never felt that he was good enough. But at the end of the day, yeah, with Nico Jackson, yes, Troops, with Nico Jackson, he doesn't pick himself. He never put himself in this setup in terms of him having to be the number one striker for our team. No, that was the recruitment team again. But I can't help but look at that situation and say, listen, man, if we had more of a competent striker up there, we probably would have been at least 2-0 up, 100%. Yeah, like it just emphasizes again that like as, as good as Jackson has, well, let's say as good, for the improvement that he's shown this season, boots are still too big for him. And like again, that's fine and everything. Like I don't mind him needing time to develop, but that means this summer, as much as important as it is to go and get a new manager, you need to get a new striker. We need to be reinforcing in the right areas, and it needs to be experience. Like I, we're good with all the young players now, and like I believe in a lot of the ones that we have, but I don't need more unless they've already proven themselves, unless they've already gone to a league title as a key part of that squad. Bar that, like, no, I need experience in the team now. No, exactly. E exactly. And, um, you know, on, on socials, we've been we've we've been calling out for the model to change. There's even been a hashtag that's that's been like change the model or something along yeah. that lines. It, it, it needs to happen at this point. It needs to happen because you can you can see even like little things off the pitch or even during the pitch, as we saw in terms of penalty decisions and players fighting for penalties and stuff that there's no maturity across this squad, except for maybe one or two players. And they're not always playing. Do you know what I mean? Our senior players are not always playing on the pitch. And at the end of the game, what I found quite telling was, you know, Thiago Silva was, was, was in bits. He was disappointed. He wanted, to, he wanted to get to that final. He wanted to try and win this competition. And then probably about 10 metres behind him, 5, 10 metres behind him, you've got, we've got Madweke that's just laughing around with his brethren. It's like, you've just got knocked out of a semi-final. Is well, what did you feel about that? Because I thought to a point people were really overdoing the criticism on him based on that. I'd be more annoyed with his performance. Listen, there's a, my thing is, is look, the performance, again, it doesn't surprise me because, again, I've called out Madweke. I don't think he's good enough for the club either. But there's a time and a place for it. Do you know what I mean? There's a time and a place for it. Like, you've literally just been knocked out. Pick your moments, fam. And that, again, look, that's not me saying Madweke is a dickhead or this, that, and the other. For me, it's just it just speaks more about the level of maturity in this squad. You know what I mean? Mm. I would, like, if, if, if imagine if you was kicking ball and that had happened, bro. Wouldn't I, I'd be pissed, bro. I'd be vexed. Well, people saying it sums up this structure. The reason why I'm not agreeing with that is because I've seen it happen before with our players. I've seen Chilwell having a laugh with so many um, players after big losses. With Saka when we lost 3-1 at the Emirates. With not... Mount after we lost in the Carabao Cup final. That's why as much as I don't like it, like I feel like it's just more from a fan's perspective. Of, we just lost, we're heartbroken, and it just doesn't seem like right, you're feeling exactly. the same way. Exactly, because you've got fans that have taken their time to come and watch this game, cheer you on for 90-plus for minutes in, in some cases, and then that's how you want to present yourself after a game. Come on, have a little bit of respect for the fans, because we're actually heartbroken. We're shattered. You know what I mean? Show some care. Show show something. We're going through a difficult time as it is already. We're being bantered left, right, and centre. We're ninth. We're, we're ninth, tenth in the Premier League. We're knocked out of a Carabao Cup by a team that, by basically a Premier League two team in Liverpool. Now we've gone to this game. We've had so many chances to beat the you know to beat the treble winners, who have just played 120 minutes in the Champions League, a, a very physical and mentally stressful game. 
and you could see that they weren't mm. really with it this um, for 90 minutes. They weren't. But the only difference between them and us is that when their clear-cut chance presented itself, they took it. They took it. We weren't able to do the same. That, that's that's where it comes down to the IQ is the main issue as well because there were so many times you have the ball in the right position. All you need to do is square the ball. And then you have Caicedo fumbles it. Enzo, poor touch. You had Gusto the opportunity to do it to Jackson. Takes too long. Yep. Chill well to Sterling at the end. And it's just like you guys are, are just making your own problems at this point. That's why I, I, I agree with everybody for today. Like I'm not looking at the manager at all. You had more than enough opportunities as a whole and you all just fumbled it. No, exactly. Exactly. But then it, it comes down to this again. It's like we have to face the fact that while this squad stays how it is, everybody is trying to develop at the same time. And how much success is that going to breed while most, most of those players on the pitch are currently on work experience while playing for Chelsea? These men are apprentices playing for Chelsea. That's what it is. That's the reality of it. Except maybe Thiago Silva, Sterling. Um, I feel like I miss Ben Chilwell. Outside of that, well, Gallagher. Yeah, I mean, maybe Caicedo. Maybe because he's played in the league before. Even still, these men are on these. These men are like 23, 22, 24. Now, I I get it because experience is not always about age. It's very relative at times. You get some 23-year-olds, 22-year-olds that I've that have played in World Cup finals, that have played in Champions League finals, that have played that have won that have won leagues and trophies here here and there. You know what I'm saying? But then when you don't have that caliber of player in your team, what are we to expect? When 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 you're just the... hoping everything's the, everything falls in the right places for you. This is exactly that's why you don't even get gassed off a six 0 win against seven. Just like, oh, nice, you got a good game of football. But that's it. I don't ever feel like we capitalize on it because we never do. No, we, we we never do. And and you know, after those chances were missed, I'm sure most Chelsea fans who were watching that game, it was just a familiar feeling. You just knew City will take one chance, and that's it. Game over. I was actually messaging Kenny Ken throughout the game. We, me and him were talking about Pick it. Pick up Kenny. Yeah, and I was saying to him, bro, the chances that we've missed, Man City are relentless. You already know they're going to keep on probing, probing and probing until they find that opening and they're going to take the opportunity. And that's what happened. We need to we, we need to stop saying, we need to be able to stop saying this because, again, I'm very disappointed that we're not in a final. It was a win, it's, it's a winnable final anyway. Whether we got Manchester United or whether we got Coventry, I wasn't bothered. I fancied our chances going into the final if we'd got this right against Manchester City. Mm. We uh, if we beat Manchester City, anybody will got anybody should be able to think, okay, cool, we can do this for one more game. But we had literally a similar script to the exact last time we were at Wembley in the Carabao Cup final, where we underperform against a team that on paper you should be able to do well against. You miss a bunch of chances. There's a little bit of VAR controversy and then you just get a terrible ending at the end of it because we love conceding a late goal. Yeah. And it's like we never, ever learn. You never learn to just like have some balls when you're in the final third. Like that's that was my problem because Jackson, you're one on one with the goal with the goalkeeper and you stopped. You literally stopped. You slowed down and then you tried to go around the goalkeeper. Someone with experience is running through just round the goalkeeper already in. Just like that. He's not stopping. He's not pausing. But this goes back to the point. And this is this has been my main criticism of Nicholas Jackson and why I'm so skeptical of this guy. He does not have instinct. And you cannot teach instinct. Because in that moment, Jackson, as soon as he was one-on-one -on -one with that goalkeeper, there was only two touches to take. And it had to happen quickly. One around the keeper, one straight at goal. Goal. That would have been it. But you can see by, by his actions and his body language, he second-guessed himself. You don't do that mm -hmm. in a situation. When you don't second-guess yourself, it's called instinct. Sometimes strikers do things where their mind catches up after the fact that they've done it. And again, that's called instinct. He doesn't have it. Look at this. Look at that. It's just, it's, it just gets more and more annoying to look back at. And another thing I noticed as well is that Jackson does not seem confident with his weaker foot. 
He doesn't. But as the, you, he, bro, even if you're not confident with your weaker foot, bro, look at the goal. It's wide open. All you'd have to do is just literally just get just get a bit of pace on that ball and, and, and it's going in the back of the net. You're a professional footballer, for goodness sake. And your and your task is to be in one of the attackers. How can you not trust your left foot in that situation? I hear it. As a pro, like you're training every day. You're in training, you're working on your game, you're developing sides of you. Like for someone who is, like I said, really good when it comes to the fundamentals of his game, you should be able to at least do something with your weaker foot, at least from the angle, at the very least. And even with you slowing down, you had an opportunity there. Then in the second half, it it was a timid, timid shot. And like I, I can't I can't ignore that one because I would cuss out habits for years for that sort of finish. I, I, I used to say he shoots like a two year old. And then Jackson, like, you go and do that. And now, then... I also don't want to let it take away from the progress that he's made this season, but, like, you are in a semi-final. I'm going to need a bit of ruthlessness from you. I'm going to need a bit of a cutting edge from you. And I didn't get that. I didn't get that. We got let down by so many players. Like, not even just him, but, like, not it was the icon of the cake. It has to be said, not even, not even just him. But I, I, am, I am very disappointed in, in, in that performance from him. I mean... When, when you factor in the, 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 the circumstance and the occasion, that is probably the biggest game of his career that he's played to date. Prove something. Show something to us. Show something to yourself that you belong here. But we keep... That in the Carabao Cup final, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. And we keep, and, and, and we keep leaving with, with questions. More questions for Nico Jackson. But you know what? Like you said, it's not entirely his fault. Yeah, Madweke. Oh, chill. yeah. You know what? We need to talk about Ben Chilwell because this is an experienced player that has actually been there and done it with our club and won trophies. What was he doing? Not squaring that ball earlier, bro. He literally had his head down, just head down, just road running as per usual. And the thing is that like, Gusto, inexperienced. Um, I, I don't, I forgot who missed it. Kai said actually to a point, he's not even an experience, but chill well. You've got the second most experience in the squad after Tiago Silva is you, bro. What is that? I think, yeah, this was it. Shocking. Players behind the ball as well. There's no, there's, there's, there's no excuse for offside. Players behind the ball. And he would have seen the first two opportunities that we would have had as well from Gusto and Kai Sado because he was sitting on the bench. So like every, everything let us down. It's just an, although, like, with Chilwell, I've got to a point where I don't expect anything from him. Like, he's been like this for months now. For about 18 to 24 months, we've had this from Chilwell. I can't be bothered with it. The fact that we're trying to sell Cucurella and not him is a disgrace. Because at least Cucurella's got good passing and good aggression. I thought he was one of the better players yesterday. I need to see both of them sold, if I'm being honest. I think we need two new left-backs completely. But then again, you, you already know how I feel about the majority of this squad. I want to sell most of them. The only one, the only ones I want to keep, Reese, Reese James. I want to see how Wesley Fofana comes back. Um, obviously, Cole Palmer, um, Lavia and Nkunku. In I want to see them have a little run of games when they get fit before I judge. That's only five players. The rest of them, legitimately, I couldn't care less if they stayed or left. And I'm including Enzo in that conversation. I tweeted earlier that I, I, I wanted, I, I wouldn't care if Enzo left the club. I said that earlier. And do you know the amount of the amount of Chelsea fans that absolutely went for me, bruv? Even with, with, with personal things being said. It's really? Like, it's like when you, bro, when you criticise Enzo, or if you're not a fan of Enzo Fernandez, it's like you shot the goose with the golden egg. You're not allowed to say anything about these kind of players. That's crazy because like I, I have defended Enzo this season, but I also hear criticism of him. Gusto's and like there has been underwhelming performances from him as well. Like he wasn't involved enough in that game for me, but there was good moments of passing from him too. I thought there was some good moments of long passing, but defensively he was robbed, he was robbed of an assist, yeah. One hundred percent. He should have had an assist. That much I'll give him. But my concern for Enzo for Enzo Fernandez has been the fact that the lack of athleticism from him is hurting him, especially in English football. Do you think it's got anything to do with the hernia injury that he's been carrying? I honest, honestly, I I don't know. 
I question whether he had that level of, of athleticism before he even signed for the club anyway. Because he doesn't get up and down the pitch very quickly. He's not the most physical midfielder either. Caicedo, how many times have you seen this guy isolated by himself? You know, basically holding, holding that front line before he gets to the defence. How many times have you seen it? And he's forced to make these fouls. He's forced to get booked. Why? Because he's on his own. One man in the midfield cannot, cannot deal with two or but three. But part players. that's also due to the manager. Because that's managerial instructions. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But again, it's certain things. And I have to keep, I've, I've, I've got to keep it consistent. Because these were, these same issues that I had with Jorginho are now peeking their head through with Enzo. Where he's easy to bypass at times. I understand it. That's my point. So it makes this I, I question is 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 he built for this league? Honestly, I think right now it's harsh it's it's not the right time to to get to that conclusion just based off the hernia injury. Like for me, I'd say, bro, your season's over, go get your surgery cuz the Copa America's this summer, right? Um I think me, so. The Euros are this summer, so probably yeah, because if that's the case, he's not getting that surgery um, at the end of the season because he's going to have to go to Copper America. So if he's if he ain't going to do that then, he's going to do it after Copper America. That means he misses the start of preseason and he's late to the, to the start of next season. Just go now. Just go now. Like, what's the point? You're, already play you're not playing to your full potential already because you can't cover the same amount of ground because you're carrying a groin injury. Just go. What's the point of aggravating it more? And then you might have to go out for longer surgery. Might as well just go do it now. We're not playing. It's not like we're playing for anything anymore this season. We're out of every cup competition at this point, and we're ninth in the Premier League. So like, funnily see. enough, like we still are technically in the race for Europe, but I've just given up belief in that. We oh, haven't bro. got the consistency, bro. How many times have we have we seen top level performances that we've been asking for followed by just disappointment? How many times, bro? Every game. Manchester United and then into Sheffield United, Everton into Manchester City. Um, off the top of my head, we had the big Man City game and then we lost 4-1 to Newcastle. I think we beat Brighton and then got embarrassed at Old Trafford. Like It's always one step forward, two steps back with us. That's been our nature from the start. So and that's why I can't really, although I say that, like now... It would be typical Chelsea to go and nick a point at the Emirates or something, but I'm not putting any money on that. So, I mean, forgive me if I don't have optimism of us even making the Europa League because I keep getting shown inconsistency time and time again. We only have one consistent... Out of our whole squad, we've got one, maybe two consistent players in this team. Maybe three. But the main one's Cole Palmer. Where would I thought we even Cole Palmer was decent yesterday. Just we didn't really find them as much as we should. And I think that was that was more the bigger issue. But again, that comes down to IQ of the players. I thought like we we just looked clueless at times when we were in the ball. I just honestly, I know it's 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 very unrealistic to have the majority of this squad gone. But I say that because people ask me, what do you think needs to be done for us to start having a positive trajectory at Chelsea? And yes, I understand it's, it's, it's not realistic, but honestly, in my opinion, we need to, more important than selling the players, we need to make sure that the same directors are not here to further make any more decisions at the club. They have to go. They have to go. I cannot stress enough how much Paul Wynn Stanley and, and, and Lawrence Stewart need to be out of this club. The only one that can stay is, is, is Joe Shields. He's the yep. only one that can stay. And let's face it, every single club, 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 sorry, from the highest level to the to the lowest level, you need the scout that's there that can identify youth. That's why he's got to stay. But then now you need to, we need to bring in a technical director that has had some part in 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 picking out either players that have gone on to be world beaters or been part of a project where they have contributed to the squad and they've gone on to win things. That's what needs to be done. Because at this moment in time, the talent ID that's, that we've got at the club is 
is basically wishful thinking for a lot of these players to just to, to just hit this upwards trajectory season after season until we do eventually start competing. And like even with that in mind, though, it's like that's all done now, in my opinion. If you want to pick young players that you want to grow and develop for the future for our football club, calm. You have picked them now. I don't need more. What do we need more for? You have already picked midfielders. You've already picked wingers. We've got like four right wingers already. Left wingers, they're there. You're prioritizing Mudrick. You've got Jackson that you're prioritizing. And you've also got David and all the other brothers that we'll probably never see playing for us. You've, got, you've already signed three goalkeepers. You brought in De Sassi. You brought in Badia Shield. Cole Wills there. Left back side is Cucurella and you just scrapped everything else. Although even Cucurella might be gone. And right backs are all locked in already. I, I don't need more young players. We don't need more young players. We need experience in those play in those positions that we need to improve, and then let the young players bed in and develop with those players. When so now, at... like this summer, we're going to know a lot about where these owners are really at. 100%. Because if we can't, if we are going for more 18, 19 year olds who haven't done anything or haven't proved anything because they've had a little run of form. Long, long, because we're not improving. We're not going anywhere. Now is the time where you get the experience. If anything, it should have been last summer. It really should have. But it'll be better. It'll be better late than never if you get it done this summer. It's just now it, it's a non-negotiable at this point. You have to bring an experience forward, someone who's already done it at the top level. Um, potentially a left winger, probably a left back. We need a left winger. We need a left back. We need and to, a centre back, bro. I, I I honestly think that this this spine needs to be addressed altogether. It does. We need a new goalkeeper. I said from the beginning, even during Petrovic's purple patch, at best this guy should be a backup goalkeeper. At best, need a new goalkeeper. Thiago I agree, Silva. but they gotta be straight world class. Like okay. I don't care how much it costs. But, and that's the and that's the point. You don't. This is the thing. You never compromise with your goalkeeper. You never ever compromise with your goalkeeper. For me at Chelsea, it's world class or nothing. And I look back at I can't be I can't believe we we really put our our, our thing in the Sanchez hat. It's that Just that is the, a the goalkeeping offense. coach got a little something out of him. That's a sackable offense. If you was if I was owner at Chelsea, right, and you had presented to me that you wanted to bring Sanchez, even at what was the price? Was it like 12 million or something? 20, I think it was 20, 20 25. Um, but either way, it's a pittance for today's market. I would have shown you, I would have given you your P45 on the spot and just marched you out of the door. How dare you? And especially at that point in time where he was third choice goalkeeper. Some people will say he fell out with Deserby, whatever. Listen, I'm not trying He's to not done it. anything to prove what um he shouldn't have been there. Ridiculous. So we need a new goalkeeper. Thiago Silva's leaving. We need a new centre back. We need to know what's going on with this midfield because Conor Gallagher's leaving. As much as, listen, as much as I do not rate Conor Gallagher, right? He has been one of our better midfielders in, the, in this season. And that's saying something. That's saying something. That should mm -hmm. not happen at any top level club where he is one of your, one of your best players all season. We need to replace that. And then we need to replace the striker. The only position that I haven't said yet is the is the central midfield. Is that pivot? I've kept quiet on that one, but everything else along that spine needs to be addressed. Winger, like yeah, you see, even with the pivot, like bringing in Lavia might be a game changer. So I hear like would we'll wait on that one. Defense, though, yeah. nobody's proven themselves. Attack, yeah. Bar Palmer, no one's proven themselves. And then you're talking wingers. Raheem Sterling, for me, just feels like he doesn't want to be here and he's just going through the motions. If that's the case, we don't need that at the club. Mudrick. We, we can't get rid of him to save our lives, though. Nope. Not with them wages. Mudrick, don't get me started on him. And then we've got the other side, the right wing. Granted, Cole Palmer plays there sometimes, but then the other guy, Madweke. I'm not having him. I'm not having him. If there's a chance where we can get Michael Elise, I say we do it. And we hey, send, if we can, I ain't saying no. And we send, no. and we send but, Madweke the other way. My only concern with Olise is I worry slightly about his injury record. That's the only thing that concerns me about him. In terms of ability, 
yes, I, I think he's a very good player. But Madweke should be... The, the, the funny thing is, is that the role should be reversed. Palace is Madweke's level. Olise should be at a better club. So maybe there's an opportunity for something to be done there. So you think we could do a swap or something? I hope so, man. I, I hope so. See, even with Nonny, it's like, I don't want to write him off just yet, but like even this season, like not done enough with the minutes that he's had. But again, I have to say it's with the minutes that he's had. Because to a point, that's not been good enough. So, Big up to Andrew, bro. What are you saying, my guy? I hope you're all good. Yeah, I'm all good, man. I, I'm just, uh, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I'm just looking at that, looking at that game today. I'm just like the semi-final, the Man United Conference one. I'm just disappointed, man. I'm just so, I, you know, end the season, Dave. As they say, you know, it disappointed. Or are, or are you surprised though? No, no. And I, I said this, Cooney. You know, I could get onto Jackson, but I think I'm. I want all this. You know this, um, Goody, Lewis. You should know. This. If we if we just recognise that Jackson is this generation Solomon Kalu, then I think you'll be fine. Right. If you understand Fair what enough. I'm saying, yeah, Goody. Mm. When we watched Kalu, did he not frustrate us the same as Nicholas Jackson? He did. Oh, absolutely, he did. Absolutely. <laughs> but he scored. He still played well. I I don't think. I, I think I can sum up Jackson's Chelsea career this week. That goal against Everton. Was just brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> like, oh, fantastic finish. Have you seen the, have you, also, guys? Have you seen a different angle of the one of Jackson when he's gone through in the first half? Have you seen that? Yeah, angle? yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bring that back that? up quickly. <laughs> it just makes me. What are you doing? But I'm my bro. Surprised. Please use your left foot. Please, just once. That was the one, right? Yeah. Have we not? That's the one right there. Just even if just. Just shoot, bro. I don't just. That's the thing. I, but I've been suffering from this, and I know Goonie Lewis. We've been suffering from bad finishes for seven years since got yeah. there. The only one that's been came up there as a good finisher was Ian Hazard, and he was just too unselfish. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he gave. Do you know what I mean? If he'd been more, he'd be up there. We'd be talking. We wouldn't have this Salah Hazard debate about stats and goals and that because he'd be up there with, up there with well over 100, 200 goals. But yeah, we, mm. again though, it's just decision making as well. It's like every it, it, Ben Chilwell yesterday, I, I'm refusing to look up, and he's like going for it. So he just he refused to. Look. If I, I, the Chilwell thing is like, if you play drop ins on pro clubs, it's like that player when you're a striker and someone's in the wing and he just doesn't bother crossing to you. That's what it was. <laughs> it was a problem. That happens so many times. Where like was, those, he didn't look up. Where was he going though? Does he think the pitch was gonna? The pitch was longer than he. He thought it was. Where was he going? He, he went from there and then went further wide. Can't understand it. But it's 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 just it's a it's a feeling like I can't even say we were robbed. We robbed ourselves on Saturday. We played. That was another one. Yeah, that was a third that one, one. That was just a bad pass. That one. At least he looked up. Yeah, he looked up. It was again. It was just a bit too late. But it's that one was probably late. the better of the three. Yeah, and it's just. That's the feeling I get because City. I don't care that they played 120 minutes. I really don't care because we played well against City in all three games. City have been there this season for us to take. We should we should have beaten City in all three games. In my opinion, we should come away. We should come away, especially yesterday. Yesterday was the the best we played against them. I know they were leggy and stuff like that, but we should. I should be sitting there going, okay, we got United in the final. I shouldn't even be sitting there going. To, if Jack, I believe if Jackson and the one that really annoys me is not even. It's the header that annoys me from Jack. It's too oh, the down. point blank one, that one, mate. Didn't that remind, back you, back didn't, that point. Didn't that remind you of Lukaku in the Champions League final? Against yeah. Man City. <laughs> He's yeah. Right, right under yeah. The now you mentioned it. But what makes it mad is that he scores a banging header against Villa in the FA Cup. Then further up. <laughs> it's just, that's why I said, if you now, older Chelsea fans who knew when you saw him play, if you just say and just visualise that this guy is our generation's Kalu, then you can deal with him missing those chances. You know what I mean? You can go, it's just him. But nah, I, I believe also if we score at least one of those goals before City did, I don't think City would have. I don't think City get back in the game either. Mm -hmm. But this is the this is the issue that we have is Chelsea cannot facilitate that Kalu situation for Jackson because we have to rely on him. Exactly. Kalu was never the sole was never the sole striker. You yeah, might the the Rogers, Torres's. Yeah, the all of them. Nelka, Maluda, Torres, Drogba. He was never the main guy. 
And that's where you will, that's where you will see me go, that's the board and the owners and the and the directors. That is them. That is them. That is them. And also because if you think if you think about it, what Jackson's done for what we paid for him, he's actually probably worked out okay in terms of price, what we pay for him, given that we've seen in other strikers, but you can't leave us just with Jackson. And then as no. bad as he is, as bad as I think he is, you can't let Broha go out on loan and not bring someone else in on loan. Do you know what I mean? You can't I mean, turn it, down the opportunity to loan Benzema. You can't do it. I, honestly, I, I will say I don't think that opportunity for Benzema was really there. You don't, re you don't reckon? Nah, because like what was it, Al Hilal or whatever club he's at? Like their season restarted in like late February, early March. So it's like, why are they going to let him go for four months? In and the you know what? The problem, you know what else the problem was? I read that they weren't going to pay any of his wages. Is what oh, yeah. Okay. That that they wouldn't have to pay his full wages. And I just don't think we were going to do that for a six month loan. Mm. Something like that. And if it's for a month, you're just doing that for the Carabao Cup final. It's not even worth that in terms of the payout. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. But yeah, so he's, on, he's, he's, on, he's on silly wages over there anyway. So yeah, no, I guess. They, they, we monthly it's just not even compared on here. It's like it's like NBA wages over there, probably even more. <laughs> it's mad. It's insane. A big so, up to go M as well. Saying Madrid, Real Madrid, Hazard celebrating after L, Chelsea Noni celebrating after the L. Now compare the fan base reactions and guess which is a small club. Maybe it's maybe it's just me because I didn't even I thought they were harsh on Hazard in itself back then when they were after him. But in terms of Nonny, like um Andrew, I don't know your thoughts on it, but to me I was more annoyed about Nonny's performance than uh what the camera caught after yeah. the game. Um, listen, I mean I, I see today Anthony celebrating doing his cup tears to the commentary fans that Man United have got thrown penalties. I mean, these players Whatever. I just think it's really uh, to focus on Nonny smiling and not mention his performance or us not reaching or making it a big deal just doesn't. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Is that's the problem nowadays? We all get like little things are built up, made out of a mountain out of a molehill. It shouldn't be okay. He laughed. Do you know what? It, after what he did Monday, he shouldn't really be laughing. But he's laughing. He's he knows Jack Grealish or whoever it was. He's laughing. He's not laughing at Tiago Silva, like some people tried to say, or something like that. He's not. He doesn't know Tiago Silva's crying in the middle of the pitch. It's just a non-story for me. The story is, after Monday, I should be seeing a better performance from Madueke. And also, you should Fact. be high in confidence that the manager's put you in the semi-final at Wembley against City after yeah. what you did Monday. And that Jackson's going to... Jackson played well apart from the finishing. At least he showed something. Madueke, I, I, mean, I mean, that second half, he might as well not have played. For me. It was just fouls and poor decision making, left, right, yeah. and center. Again, again. poor decision making. The one on he didn't he didn't take on anyone as well. I know Ake is very good, but he didn't even try. Didn't try. And, yeah. and it's like basically you're a non entity. I understand Gallagher on the left wing was doing a defensive role, but what were you doing? You're supposed to be an outlet. We were always going down the right. You and Gusto was doing more than you down the right, and, and Palmer was doing more than you. So. I don't know, man. The whole thing's like the winger situation's got to be addressed because as bad as Mudrick is, and Mudrick is just shit. Thank <laughs> you. you know what I mean? he's just, Thank he's you, just, bro. He's just the. He's Goody. Can I ask you who the hell decided to let him take the free kick in the in the last minute on the cup? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> do you know, it reminded me of lads. Did you guys watch the, the Bayern Arsenal game and see Osaka's last corner? Osaka corner. Yep. Osaka corner. Yep. Yep. I loved Osaka for that. And then, as you know, karma just comes back and we get that from yesterday. And, and, Ridiculous. And, and, and he didn't he didn't even do anything. Do you know what I mean? It's like he doesn't make he he doesn't even now make an impact properly. Do you know what I mean? He's supposed to make an impact positively. Do you know what I mean? And you would have thought that he would have got himself because I think in the second half they focused on our right hand side more in that yep. second half. You could tell because they weren't getting anything done left because Gallagher was there. So it should have been the tactic should have been he should have been screaming for the ball and going, hit me over the top. Just hit me over the top. Even if I don't, even if I miss, we need to keep these guys back, hit me over the top. Nothing. And then at the end, I mean, he allowed himself to be caught up by um Walker as well. <laughs> Walker yep. has played 120 minutes midweek, played nearly 90 minutes in the game, and Mudrick had the ball on him, and he had to be caught up. That that cross at the end, the free kick. I mean, well, it's the free kicks and the corners as well. We just brought him on and let him take every set piece. And I thought like, 
Why? Well, for corners, I don't even know who you give it to at this point. But the free kick, you still have Palmer there. I think Enzo was still playing. Let me check who's still on the No, side. Enzo had been taken off by that time. Enzo had gone. So you had Palmer. Gallagher's not really the better option. You could let Chilwell take it. He's left an, an ins You could let Chilwell take it. You could, but there was so many. Potentially things. Sterling. Oh, you're not going to have Sterling on the end of the header. Yeah, not in a wide situation like that. I don't think maybe more central. But it's like, but the thing is, okay, you're allowed to take it, but you overhit it. <laughs> you overhit it. It's just, it's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's just mind blowing. It really is. It's just another thing where you go. I can't blame. That's we're hopeless. But I look, I look, I look back on the bench and I go, the only sub I was hoping he'd bring on, which he didn't, was Chukwemeka. And he didn't even bring him on. Didn't Interesting. Yeah. He didn't bring him on. He's getting like NBA trash minutes now and again. You know, he's getting like last ten minutes. Build him up. Let him have a go. Do you know what I mean? Because essentially, because they went to the right, Gallagher's job, depending on the left, became null and void. He wasn't needed on the left because they were they were coming down the right. Bring Chukramika on, make a difference. But you know, who knows? I feel I feel like in the last ten minutes we started resting on our laurels and sitting back a little bit more as well. Which is probably why you, you saw Gallagher still remaining on the pitch, which I mean is annoying in itself. But like at the very least, Gallagher wasn't terrible. Like there was decent moments of build up play from him. He did make a good pass to Jackson for the second chance on the timid shot and everything. So at least there was that. <laughs> A uh, big up to Cenac as well, saying Palmer was seen laughing with City players right before walking onto a pitch, but nothing about him not caring or immature. Maybe it's Nonny's haircut right before walking onto a pitch for the first for the first half. Like I don't pay attention to that anyway. I've seen Chilwell and Mount like laughing after the Carabao Cup final. I've seen Chilwell laughing after he got battered three one at the Emirates in lockdown. I'm sure there's numerous other instances that I don't remember. Like. I just I don't care too much. I care how you perform in the 90 minutes before that. That's, That's the, the most thing. important thing for me. That's key, yeah. If, if we'd run, if we'd won one nil, pitch never gets bought up, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> pitch never gets bought up because we won. It's only because we lost does it get bought up. You should be more. But I thought that camera point. angle was just done deliberately because like you see two varying emotions. You see Tiago Silva emotional because this is probably his last ever time playing at Wembley, his last opportunity to win a trophy. And Nonny's just Talking to if someone you that, read, he that he knows. If you read also, because everything's a spin, if you read the way some some of these reports are written, are written, then it's almost like they're trying to say this was happening at the same time. You know, he's, he was laughing at Thiago Silva crying. And it's like, it's such a non, it's such a non story for me. It's like, that's not the big, Chelsea fans should not be focusing on non Madureki laughing. Whether we win, lose, or draw, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doing that. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll be so paper. real. If they're thinking he's laughing at Thiago Silva, that's an IQ test. I don't think, I don't think they. I don't think he was. No, no, I know he wasn't. But it's when you I read, think, when you I read, think the media story, might spin that. There's a big of, of that, but he tried to spin it that way. It's like he wasn't. You know, it's just nonsense. Just focus on the pitch. I mean, if he, he I mean, if we would won as he, and he's laughing at a Man City fan, everyone would be laughing, loving it, right? Do you know, what I mean? <laughs> every Chelsea fan would be loving it. Yeah, he's he like he's doing it real well, you know. He's like that, but narrowness you know, have got, got to run, right? You got to sell a story because it's not because we didn't get like we didn't get destroyed by City, so you got to do something else instead of focusing on the why did, why we went out, which is couldn't finish. It's oh, Manuel Mandarecki's laughing at Thiago Silva crying on the pitch, or was laughing at the same time Thiago Silva was crying on the pitch. I found that strange. I mean, Thiago he Silva doesn't was care for me, but there we go. Like we can't, we can't pretend like there's just moments mean players don't care because then you're questioning their mentality and everything. And like, yeah. I don't believe these players are just phoning it in, especially after you just signed an eight-year contract. Like you're, you're gonna want to perform better because you get better incentives, and that means more money for you at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah. like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand that in general. But like, yeah. for me, I just think everyone was just angry after the cup final. They see that, and instantly everybody's anger is just directed at Nonny. And to a point, like. I actually think Nonny's been the most micro-analyzed person in terms of their off-the-field activities this season. Like, there's the whole nightclub stuff. There was... Um, I've seen Instagram videos of him celebrating with Chukwemeka after the um, Leicester game. That video of him just playing music in his car and he was getting ripped for that. 
Like to a point, like I think people just really zero in on Madueke, and like I, I just don't really understand that stuff he does outside the pitch. Listen, he's allowed the social life. That yeah. much I will say. Yeah. Mm. Like they, every, every, everybody deserves a social life. So yeah. I agree with that. Like in some in some cases, he has been unfairly treated by the media. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But again, mm. it's for me the main question I have. Outside of this game, and I've had it for a long time, is the overall potential ability of these players. I I, I don't I, I don't have enough belief in a lot of these players. I'm sorry, it has to be said. No need to apologize. There's no, no reason I'm, for you to apologize. Yeah. If we were and doing it, because people think because people think it's an agenda or whatever, when really and truly, I want every player that I have criticized to turn around and give me the middle finger. Yeah, go ahead and actually perform. I want this manager to do the same. I want him to same. give me the literal middle finger and say, I know what I'm doing. Screw you. Yeah, you sit back and you just support. No problem. Manager needs to go as well. Right. 100%. Yeah, this, the directors need this to go. Is the thing. Imagine yeah. he's going, oh. some of these players need to go as well. I agree. I but like, it's not an agenda. Like I've always said, an agenda is an opinion that somebody else just doesn't agree with when it comes to what you're saying, and then they'll just paint it up as an agenda. When in reality, no, like you're just seeing things from a different lens. Yep. Like when there is no reason for ev anything about this club not to be under the microscope when we've been mid-table for two years. We've spent about eight hundred, nine hundred million. We're going to spend a bit more, and we still don't look convinced. We've got idiot directors, an idiot manager, and naive players. Yeah. Also, an agenda is, for me, an agenda is someone who, even if they don't like a player, would always just say their shit no matter what, <laughs> even when they play well. You what what an agenda mean? would be is if I came out today and said, this is all Potcher's fault. Well, that's Potch out, this is all really, fault. Since the cup final, I've not so, really had a go at Potch. The agenda would be, for me, would be to blame Potch for every single thing that happens on the pitch. Like, for me to blame him for Jackson's misses. Yes, that would be an agenda. That would be mm -hmm. going, I'm, I'm, I'm not laying any blame on Jackson whatsoever. He actually set up the team. This is what I'm talking about. He actually set up the team for us to score. <laughs> we just didn't take the chances yesterday. That was the thing. We didn't take the chances. He actually set us up properly. And yeah, that's why you I was shocked that we were good defensively. I was like, rah, we got them. Pedro Again, we were solid up until those shots point. that City, everyone goes to City, well, City had more shots. Those shots at Petrovic, I would expect every single goalkeeper in the world to save, a decent goalkeeper to save. They weren't like he wasn't tipping them over the bar, stretching out. Anything like that, I expect him to save that. So, and he and he isn't coming out man of the match. Do you know what I mean? He's not coming out mm -hmm. our man of the match or anything, or even close to our man of the match. He's not. So it's just like I said, we we've all been sitting there. We've been suffering from bad finishes or not been finishing our meals for the past seven years. It's not even just this this team. Since he, well, let me be frank. Maybe five years when Eden has other left because he saved us on multiple occasions. But an actual number nine who scores. Now, Michael, why bring up Morata to me? Because he was. Oh, yeah, I think he's back. I think he's back. I've got a question for the, for the both of you, actually. Do you think just signing one number nine is enough, or do you feel that we should sign two? Two. So I tell you why. Jackson's not a number nine. He's a winger. He's a, he works off a number nine. I think he'll work well off a number nine. He's right? a yeah. He's a Kalu. Kalu wasn't a number nine. He was a winger. Or wide forward, whatever the terminology is these days. He's a wide forward. Jackson would work really well with a nine, I believe. He would work well. But yeah, I want two. I want to, I, just get me two. I know it sounds easy, but we need two. Yeah. We need two. I don't really think of the perspective of getting two strikers, but letting Jackson focus more on the build-up where he's a lot more better at, like I'm not even against that shout. Yeah. So I asked that question. Personally, personally, um, the only way I'd be happy that we're linked with Sesco is that if there's another striker that we're signing yes. as well. Yes. That's the only yeah. way I'd be happy with that signing. But to sign him by himself would be a crucial mistake, massive mistake. Yeah. yeah. If we got he's not if, done enough, the games I've seen, he's not been yeah, clinical. If we got an Oshiman or, or Gokieres or somebody, and then we signed Sesco, cool. I'd be happy with that. I'm a bit, I'm a bit wary of Gokieres as well, really. Of who? In terms of, in terms of Gokieres from Sporting Lisbon, I'm a bit mm -hmm. wary of him. Like whether this is a flash in the pan, do you know what I mean? 
one season. I don't, one season. I don't think he is, and the reason why I say that, Andrew, is because um, again, I've, I've my my stepdad. I've never watched him, by the way, but I've I have. I watched him. I watched him and and Harma last season um, at okay. Coventry City because my stepdad has been a season ticket holder for the years plus. Mm. So, like, I do keep an eye on Coventry, and I do not think Gokiere is just a flash in the pan. Absolutely. No, I mean right everyone back. knows everyone knows Strasbourg, Steve, right? So yeah, I go really, uh, and he's been on his money with the European results this season as well. So I I usually go to him, and he's he doesn't, hasn't said a bad word about Gokar is. So it's like okay, but I I be with you. I I it can't be Gokar is by himself. Yeah, you know I mean it has to be another striker because we just can't rely on one one striker. If even if Gokar hits the ground running, there's going to be a part in the season naturally where he's going to burn out a bit. Do yeah, I mean. Or he's not going to be on, or he's not going to be on form, and we need that other player to to come in, like when we had. I know they played together all the time, but it was when we had Drogba and Elka, like when Drogba went off, when Drogba went off to the Afri African Cup of Nations, and Elka stepped in. Do you know what I mean? And even played with him, spice his game and played with him. But at least we had the options. There's basically even, no drop off there at all. Yeah, even, Elka. even I know he got he didn't get a lot of time, but even knowing that Loic Remy was there, you know when we had. Costa and Remy was there. Yep. yep. The funny thing with Remy is massively. That Remy got bad luck. Every time like Costa was suspended or injured, <laughs> Remy got injured the next game. Yeah. He got injured the next game. And it was like, no. But even just but just having the options, you need if you're going to play one up front, you need two strikers. You need, you need one on the bench and one Stein. And in case and they very rarely play together as well, only in the odd occasion when we need a goal and stuff like that. But you're right, we need two strikers. Oshman. Oshman will be great, but it can't be Oshman with Jackson as his backup because it, it just wouldn't work. Do you know what I mean? For me, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, like th that was a very good question to be fair because, like, the more we put them, I feel like that game was a perfect emphasis on the whole argument that Jackson should probably be playing as a winger or off the striker because everything was great past that. That's why I kept trying to emphasize that as well on, on all these reviews because I'm not going to let people say you had a 0 out of 10 performance he scrubbed down every aspect of the game. No, it's just as soon as he got to the final third. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's better off just playing in a, in a position that emphasizes all of those attributes because I don't know if he's going to get that cutting edge in him. I don't know if he's going to get that composure because that sort of thing isn't really coached. Like, that, that comes well, from you. That comes from your own development. You coach instincts. You can't. No, you can't. That's that's something that you, you naturally just have. Yeah. And it's like Drogba got that in his later years. Drogba, but he already had a fund of foundation for it. Do you know what I mean? He just needed fine-tuned to it. And he got fine-tuned at Chelsea in his yep. all-round game. Jackson is not the Jackson's not a number nine, so he's never gonna get that. He's never gonna get that. I mean, he could have a freak season like a Cole Palmer if he wanted to. You know what I mean? But he end, but if he took penalties and stuff like that, but he, he he's going to be the guy who, like I said, like a Kalu, is going to get you anywhere in all competitions, ten to fifteen goals, eight assists, and that I think that that's good from a player like him. But it's not. Oh, we do good. have in Cuckoo as well. It's not good when he's your number nine. That's the problem. Yeah, it's good when he's by a number nine. Because then his goals are added to our number nine's goals and we are up the table further and further in competitions. That's when it's good, not when he's the number nine yeah. by himself. And and Cuckoo, for me, <laughs> big question marks. I, I, I don't even use him Cuckoo as an, missing in Cuckoo as an excuse this season because he's hardly played. So I can't even use him as... I can't say, like, yeah. I played the first 20 games and that's why we fell off. Because we have no idea how good he, how good he is system or where he's going to play. Because if now, if you think about it, We've seen Palmer in the middle do a job on Rodri, which is what yep. Gallagher did the two previous games. But also, Palmer can do the attacking side as well. So, and Cooper can't play there, and he's not an out and out nine. He's not really a winger. Do you know? <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like it's great options to have for the manager, but cookie has got a big question mark next season because of his fitness. Yeah, Reece James, and a lot of other players. Big question marks, and. He's got he's got something to prove, and I hope he, I hope he does prove. But definitely, what Gooley said: two strikers, definitely in the summer, two strikers, no doubt. 
So we're looking at two strikers, potentially a left winger, a left back, a centre back, goalkeeper. and a goalkeeper. Yeah, goalkeeper. and a goalkeeper. So we're looking at five areas. Listen, I like Petrovic, but sadly for me, his distribution kicking wise, I no mean, like flummoxed a bit. He left. He gave Thiago Silva a hospital pass in that first half. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the way he slipped. That, yeah. Also. Also, Kukurea gave uh, Thiago Silva a hospital pass in the first half as well. But I'm fine with Petrovic being a number two, which is what he essentially bought for. I'm fine with that. We need like a Diogo Costa, something like that. We, we need that. We need some of that guy who's got the distribution and the thing. I think he's improved since the World Cup as well because I thought he was a bit dodgy in the World Cup for um, uh, for, Portugal. for Portugal. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. but I think he's. I watched. I watched him in those two Arsenal games. He commands the area. He commands it like a boss, and he's only like twenty-five. And his, like and that. and you see how much he's did the, the, the defense trust him as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that's a very understated thing. Is like defenders will perform a lot better if they trust the man behind them. Mm. That's the thing. Yeah. That position there, especially the two centre backs and and the goalkeeper. If there's a level of trust between those three, they're going to perform at their best. But let yeah. one of them be dodgy, you'll start to see the rest of them not really be too <laughs> sure. You need that, one hundred percent. You need that. And um, we've seen it, Sanchez. They don't. This defense, whoever's playing the defense, does not trust Sanchez. No, nope. we saw it in the Leicester game, and he's so lack lackadaisical in his passing and stuff like that. I mean, he nearly got caught out twice in that Leicester game. They nearly, they yeah. nearly ran, ran off him. And he's just, he's proven it again. He, Sanchez is just no. He needs to. He needs this to is go. another one where it comes. Gone. My bad. He needs to go. He's young enough where someone will take him. Like that, he's only about twenty-five or something like twenty-six, something like yeah, that. Someone will, take, someone will take him, but he's just—he's just not good in either way. And Petrovic, he's good in other areas, but his kicking needs to improve. Uh, he's passing out from the, that's what got me to pass out from the back yesterday. <laughs> was like, sure. why, yeah. why are we doing it? To be fair, we have been calling that out for a few months now with him too. We have, yeah. But yesterday in particular, it nearly cost us twice um, in the first half, and Thiago Silva just about tackled. I think it was Kevin De Bruyne. In the penalty area, or so that would have been a penalty for uh, Kevin De Bruyne. But yeah, I say we need a goalkeeper. I don't know if this ownership will get a goalkeeper. That's the problem. Do you know what I mean? That's It'd the be thing bad. because we've we've. This is another thing I was going to lead into because again, it's another indictment on the directors and the owners. Because how many how many goalkeepers have we already bought? We bought Slanina, we brought in Petrovic, we brought in Sanchez, and now we're saying we need to go in for another one. That's four goalkeepers in three seasons. And how many realistically can we get rid of? Um, yeah. Well, Serena's out on loan. So he'll probably go out on I think Serena would do like a Courtois route and go on loan for like three or four years, but in different, the league's levels will rise. Because he's only 18. Well, like 18 or 19 now or something. Yeah. Like. Still a yeah. baby. Yeah. Petrovic, Petrovic, Petrovic was brought in as a number two or to challenge, to challenge, and that word challenge. I always hate that word for goalkeepers. Oh, he's been brought into challenge. Why do you need someone to bring to challenge? He's either going to start or he's not going to start. You know what I mean? It's like that. And Sanchez is just appalling. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, there's, why isn't ask, why isn't Poch being asked why he's not starting Sanchez? Questions that I know I don't want him to start, but why isn't he starting Sanchez since, you know, he's fit, he right? doesn't trust him. But he then I've got another him. question. Is how long does Kepa have left on his contract for Chelsea? One year this summer. One, One year. year. Okay, One year. that could work in our favour. I think if they get... I think if I read somewhere, if they get like 10 to 12 million, they would have made a profit on him this <laughs> if they're looking for like 10 to 12 million. But got that. I mean, I think Kepa should take a look. I think mean, Madrid were, were offering that, but we rejected it. Yes, because I think they thought he was going to have a stellar season at Madrid and he's been ousted by a Ukrainian youngster called Lunin. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> it's like I think that says it all. But yes, one year. One year. Do you think he might be the one that we turn to? Because you got to remember, Kepa was playing a lot in preseason before that, before we got rid of him. I hope not. But again, it's, and this is the thing, and this is the biggest red flag for me is whether I like to say this or not, is Kepa is a better keeper than Sanchez. And currently, um, what's his name now? Petrovic. He's a backup for me. So where does that leave Kepa? <laughs> and the problem is Sanchez is on a 
see the problem with Sanchez, they said the same statement with Pedro, which is what and Sanchez was brought in to challenge uh Kepa as well. So it's like listen, I think if you get like a 10, I think if you I don't care about the profit on Kepa, it doesn't really matter. Just if you get like an eight million pound bid for him or something, just take it. Just get rid, yeah. He's he's just offer. This was the he, problem under the old regime, and they just didn't take that like, because it was like five million less for someone or something. Just just take it. So it's not sometimes it's not all about profit. Do you know what I mean? If some of these players aren't worth what you think they are, just take it. Like if someone comes in and offers 35, 40 million for Lukaku, you got you got to take it. Do you know what I mean? It's like you've just got to you got to roll the dice and take it. We need to get some of these players out that have been here for, for years and taking up huge we wages. A, kept us we on 160 a grand a week. We had a prime opportunity last summer to get rid of Lukaku as well. Yeah. Prime opportunity. And remember, he's on like 350k a week. Yeah. He's top earner, isn't he? Apart from, yeah, he's top earner. Him, I believe it's him and, and Raheem Sterling that are the top earners yeah. at the club. Yeah. And he's, and I haven't seen it, but he's he was talking to Saudi League up in early part of this year, so maybe that's it. And Roma can't afford, afford him. Essentially, because we're looking like I think we're looking for like thirty-seven million to forty million pounds or something like that. So that will get a profit on him. But that's the thing: you're going to make a profit on him because you're going to get rid of his wages. Yeah. So you're going to make a profit anyway. It's getting rid of like seventeen million pounds a year just on on wages or something like that. So it's. I keep trying to speak Osh um Lukaku to Napoli into existence because I feel like it just works perfectly with getting Oshman the other way. Yeah, and you and he he has banged in Italy. Even at Roma, he's he scored a lot of goals. So it's like you would think proven in the league, proven in the league. He's won a league title there. That's that we should at least try it. Yeah, just take whatever value is worth off the Oshman transfer. It might even look a little bit better after that. Well, if you think if you're saying he's worth forty million and they want like one hundred and twenty, they're still going to get eighty million from us just for in 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 money. Do you know what I mean? Plus an actual player. Well, the only thing is going to be wages. That's still going to be an issue. That's the thing. That's gonna that's gonna that's gonna kill it because we're paying part we're paying part of his wages, right? From his own yeah, money. probably. I, Romo definitely can't afford that. Yeah, they can't afford three fifty, no way. They still got so then the that, that again just leaves Saudi because Saudi will just do book value whatever wager on and they don't care. Yeah, and a forty million transfer for them is cheap. They got no FFP over there. They got no FFP, no no one to put that put um Sustainability and profit. <laughs> I think the only rule is you need a certain amount. You can only have a certain amount of uh, foreign players in each club. Correct me if I'm uh, wrong in the chat. I think, I think that's they the increased rule. that, though, I think. I think they increased that from, like, 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 or something in each club. That they can have now. I think they increased that. Because they're also not going to do that's what the, they did. They're not going to do what the Chinese League did. And that scuppered their Super League. Because the Chinese League put in, after all the foreign players came over, they put in that whatever the Chinese club spends on a player transfer wise, they have to give the same amount to the federation. And that's why that league went it just went, it yeah. went, it went down like that. Greedy. Ah. <laughs> yeah, wow. I know. So remember when we sold Oscar for 60, they didn't have to do it then. But if, if they yeah. did have that rule in, they'd have to pay 60 then to the, to to the, the federation. So you're paying like 120 million in all for Oscar plus it's like 400 grand a week. Well he just says well there's a lot of shouts. For, there's a lot of shouts for Ivan Tony in the chat. This is the thing. I don't even bring him up because I know he's not coming to Chelsea. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I yeah. I I I listen. Out I the don't know you know. No, I I because apparently also have called on him. The other options the are like I think West Ham. That's a strange one. That's just a sideways step from Brentford. That's just that's just. Mad. That's the thing. If it's just us and West Ham, I mean, like, I'd take a punt. I really I would. I don't believe the Man United stories either. He was linked to last week. I don't believe he's going to go to Man United, especially if he wants like two fifty a week or something like that. There's just no way that's going to happen. They just signed Hoyland. So there's no way that's going to happen. I think he. Do you know what? I think if he lowers his wage demands, I see maybe Spurs coming in for him. Yep, or something they like that. Especially if he's only forty or fifty, something like that. That could be a real. Yeah, with his wage options, would we be willing to break our wage structure for him? We've done Probably it for not. Enzo. We've done it for Nkuku. I'm not sure if we. I don't know if we do it for Tony or not. But what's I hope gonna go against, what's going to go against Tony, and I don't like it. What's going to go against him is that he's only played for Brentford. 
So that's yeah. going to go against him in these in these like big clubs. Mine's going, well, can he do it? He's 28. What's he still? I know he's had a chance at Ben, but what's he still doing at 28? Only blossomed at really 25, 26, you know, stuff like that. Can he really do it? I mean, even he's come back and he's sort of plateaued, right? Since he's been back, do you know what I mean? He started off well for like the first few games, and then it's like sort of been mid mm-hmm. since he's been back. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not as if he's hit like he's not in double digit goals or anything like that. So, it and and Brentford are fighting for their lives as well. So, it's an interesting one. I mean, I would I would go for him, but it's still a risk. To be honest, like nearly all of them are risks at this point. Even the likes of a Jokeres who's been balling out. It's like people still think, like, can he do that again? Don't know. With Oshiman, there's been questions over how clinical he can be. Um, with Tony, there's people talking about the bets and everything, which I really wouldn't be that concerned about. People saying Watkins in the chat. Good He's luck. He's not going to leave Villa. Good luck. Doubt that. Man's on a long term contract in a better squad with a better manager. And they're going to well, get Champions League as well. So why would exactly. You no reason to go at all unless you're giving him silly wages, so that wouldn't happen. Yeah, Solanke, I, I don't think well, I don't even think we'd be that interested in him to be fair, but that's a new one. That's a new one, but even then, I'm I'm not too sure on him because he's only just really sparked up this, this season. Is, yeah, this has been his best season, really. So we don't know if there's any consistency there, and they're going to ask for 50 million right away. 100%. I don't think getting him would be a problem or if no. the history considered, but it's just what they last for. And again, my question is, this is the only season where he's really done it. Exactly. And he's sort of, he's, a, he's sort of had a great first half, but second half of the season sort of been a bit mixed. Yeah. As well, because I think people got a wise. <laughs> oh, I think broke up again. Isak's a nice shout as well. I'm but... oh, sorry. Isak's a good shout, 100%. Tammy, I'll time you out for that. I'll be real. I'll time you out for that. Don't say Tammy. Big up Tammy. Uh, the problem with me, the problem with uh, Isak is now with them changing their financial fair play and profit sustainability rules, it's going to really help Newcastle in that way. Yeah. You know, in terms of what they can spend and stuff like that. And Isak, they bought him, I believe they bought him for 60 million, if I'm right. I think it was 75. They're gonna want nothing right. less than a hundred for so him. Whatever it is, and you can say he's 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 done well, very well. That that you're probably gonna have you're probably looking at triple figures. Yeah, try and buy hundred percent. Sixty three million. That's it. You're gonna look. They're gonna ask for hundred million right away. The market, the market will dictate yep. they'll ask for hundred million right away, or just over. So they'll go. Yeah. They'll go. They'll go, well, Man United paid 72 million for a guy who scored nine goals the previous season. 72 million. Nunes has got what 88 million with up to 88 million, 90 million with add ons and stuff like that. And he's not burning the league away. This guy is, he looks like a re reincarnation of somewhat of Thierry Henry, the way he does it, the way he opens his body up to get it with his right foot. Uh, 100, 100 million, please. Yeah, Lion Share makes a good point. He is. He has got a questionable injury record. Yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah. He's shot. Okay, that's that's more new to me, if anything. And we, we've already got problems at our club with injuries, so, you know, you know it's fine. That's the issue. <laughs> oh, raw. I just pulled up his injury record. Crap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not pretty. I mean, it's, it's not terrible. There's just a lot more minor stuff, but, I mean, yeah, it's still not a great look. Still not great. Look, missed 106 days with five problems. There's a couple groin injuries, hamstring, knee problems, arm injuries, and the rest are just a few bruises and all of that. But yeah, there is a decent there is a decent list on there. So I hear that. And big up to Cenac as well, saying, imagine having pain in your lower abs groin area and asking them to run, turn and run on a dime versus other athletes. I blame medical staff. Go get surgery. Like, this is why with the athleticism argument for Enzo, like, I can only hear it to a point right now. He's not fully fit. I was but the is, 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 have you seen athleticism from this guy anywhere else? During the World Cup, during Benfica, during River Plate? If you have, please let me know. I'm happy to be proven wrong. But no, I just... so Around Potter and Lampard, we didn't have him moving as much. And he was playing much better. 
Well, he was he was that's because we strip mine in midfield, and it was just basically him Gallagher for like three months, three and a half months in a pivot. Um, by but I agree. Listen, no, I haven't not seen him do athleticism, but he's been asked to do something that's not in his yeah repertoire. That's the problem. You know, I and he's listen. I as he, listen for me. I I'm back in zone, but I'm not one of those that are like buried their head in the sand. He has played appalling in some games. League Cup final mm. springs to mind right away. Um, and that's when we were actually good in that game. So to, for him to play badly and we were making chances in that game, says a lot. Um, but even, even if he's... My thing is this, okay, so even if he's got this hernia, as a manager, if you know that as a manager, why would you still play him? Do, do, you, know, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? It's like, why would you... I know we've got limit, we haven't got a lot in midfield, but if I'm like... An, has, any, has anyone had a hernia yet? Nah, uh, yeah. they're right. The, the movement, I don't know how much injections they've given this guy to be able to move, especially if it's in the area. But it's a it's a thing that you need to have done. It's not good. You, you can put it off as much as you want, but there's no way of healing it by itself. You need to get it operated on. And my thing is now, our season's over. So you don't need to pick him again this season. Mm -hmm. It's over. It's got Copper America in the summer. Uh just, just let him get, get it done. I mean, we've got an outside chance of finishing in league position, maybe, but a very slim outside chance. But let's face it, our season's over. Just let him go. Anyone has got an injury now, sit them out like in Cuckoo. Don't rush him back. Yeah. Leave James, don't, don't, rush him back. don't rush him back. Reese James, James, no, no. Have a nice... We'll see you, we'll see you in pre-season. Stay over there. Even Gusto now. Is there anything longer? No. Sit. You're done. You're done for the season. Don't need him. Ah, no worries, no worries. Right, so big up to Cenac as well, saying go get Diogo Costa, Tony, or Oshiman, and whatever centre back you feel is on the way. Um, fix this spine, and whoever is the next competent coach, figure it out. Like I, I still wish we'd be looking at a new manager now, but like I can't even tell with us. Reports are saying completely different things. Like one saying we're waiting to see who's on the table. Next says we're, we've I'm already pretty, been looking for a few months. I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident that uh, we're gonna. Pochettino won't be manager of Chelsea next season. I don't think he will. I'm hoping. I think we're going to be looking at other managers. You know the big problem now is there's gents though. Nagelsmann just signed a new contract with Germany. Germany, yeah. Bayern Munich are in back in the market now for a manager as well, and that's a big. That's a big problem at the moment. Even under, like, even when we were still good a few years ago, Bayern Munich would still be ahead of us in the queue if it's they're going for managers. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah, like, it's Bayern Munich. It's Bayern Munich. It's royalty, right? Even even we've done well in Europe. They're a, they're a level above us when it comes to European heritage and royalty. So that would mean if you, if you are a Zerbi lover, they're probably in there for the Zerbi. I don't know what Manchester United are doing. I really don't know what they what they're doing because. True. This guy could still win an FA Cup and he could literally go to them. I've won two trophies in two years with this shit squad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like, <laughs> and, and when you're a new ownership, do you really want to come in and really look for a manager? Do you know what I mean? Especially if a manager's come in and won two trophies in two seasons. It, I, I, I understand what you said, Goonie, and I, I, and I would always favour that side, but I can legitimately see him staying here for another season. I can, because I don't think because it's all about ego, right? It's mm -hmm. all about ego because they'll go to us. Oh yeah, well they they got to a league cup final, they got to a semi final. Oh look, he's finished seventh, or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Like in the league or something like that. And they'll go, well, actually, yeah, we are in European football now, so he's actually met one of the requirements. And they'll give him the that be the minimum thing he's hit. Because remember, everyone. Oh yeah, they want Europe. But they wanted Champions League. Let's be let's be right. They wanted Champions League football next season. Then it was Europa League, and then it was oh any Europe. uh, any European football. <laughs> yeah, so it's like if he Pathetic. gets like, it is right. It is. He should go for me. He should go. The only reason he stayed longer in his job is the cup the cup runs. It's the only way. It's the only reason he stayed longer in his job. If we got knocked out in the FA Cup third round and lost the League Cup final, I think he would have been gone. That and they're gone. really sniffing the injury copium as well. Uh -huh. oh, if we just had all our players fit, we'd we'd be fine and every yeah, cool. That's why we've been mid table all season. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we needed cool. we needed all those guys to beat uh, Burnley and Sheffield United. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Guys, yeah. 
Sure. All their inexperienced argument to then defend for your lives against Liverpool's under 18s. You're disgraced. Yeah. We, need, we need all those would have helped us yesterday, right? With those easy chances, buried. Yeah, sure. Okay. See how much we're just rolling this just off the cuff because of how much <laughs> stupidity we've seen this season. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Big up to C saying, Can I ask why the medical team thought it was a good idea to have Enzo on the pitch when he has a hernia? He shouldn't be anywhere on that pitch and on the surgery bed. It might just be a decision from the manager because it was well, the same thing with Lavia. Yep, just about to bring it up. It's not medical can it's the medical can say all they want. Unless it's like an injury where he can't walk, like an ACL or, or something like that. The player and the manager decide between themselves whether they're gonna do it. And they take it upon themselves, they risk themselves. Remember, Cesc Fabregas once came on for Arsenal substitute with a broken leg and scored. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He had a broken it wasn't like a real like Snap. Didn't it's John like Terry dislocate his like, arm once and then play like on? Yes. He, but we've seen these guys play with fractured cheekbones. You know what I mean? They have the mask on and stuff like that. So it's, it's the players. It's the players. The managers, the managers always go, look what we're doing now. Look what Arsenal are doing with Arteta now. Zach is nowhere near fit. But Arteta's going to flog him. It's a fighter. They're going to flog the Look at Klopp with his squad now in Liverpool. He's flogging that squad to death. This is last season. They don't care. And then players aren't going to say that that was, a, that was uh, ironic and refreshing midweek when Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne said they wanted to come off. When have you last seen that in the top side? True. When have you last seen that? True. I was in a game of that magnitude. Yeah. I mean, it's I, mad. It's mad. I, I don't care if it was a semi final. I would have said to Enzo, that's great, but you're injured and you need to have surgery. Because the further you put it off, the further the, you get back. Even if you miss the rest of the season, so what? Actually, you might have even could have been back for the FA Cup final if you made it, if you'd already had the surgery right now, and we got through. You could have been back. Had one game a week. We've had all these injuries, which is even more insane. But uh, big up to Guy. I'm saying, Lewis, have you ever danced with Timberlands in the pale moonlight? Hashtag R9 Remontada. I ain't even trying to think about that. Lukaku is a last choice for us if we have nothing left. <laughs> see, when I see that... Lukaku referred to as R9, it triggers me so badly. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Badly. I'm sorry. Charles referred to R9, so it's oh. not going to trigger me that badly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Big up to Steve saying, only thing I'm looking forward to is the Fabrizio. Here we go, dopamine like last year when we sold six players in an hour. I'll be so real, bro. I ain't going to hit the same like last year. Last year, I thought, this is a new Chelsea. It's all going to be fine. We'll be back competing for trophies in two years. Oh, oh boy. I know, but we did, we did compete for trophies because we had easy runs, and that means it's progress, apparently. Hey, we bought Man City again. We see what happens. Let's Big up to Steve. It. Let's face it, the only here he goes I want is the manager gone and the director's gone. That's the only here he goes I want from Fabrizio this summer. I couldn't really care less about transfers right now. Yeah, unless you pull some baller out the bag, I don't care. If it's another yeah. Dini, I'll just get in the bin. Unless, unless Go yeah. like Goonie wants me sign like Musiala or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? Like and, boy... A big up to C, last super chat. Big up to everybody who's donated again. I appreciate the love. Sub to Casually FC, sub to Man Knows Football 2. Links are in the title, so there's no excuse. Everybody sub immediately. He says Enzo will bang in a possession-based system. I agree. The system we're doing isn't necessarily suited for him as well, especially the positions that we've asked him to hold up. But again, that also is not a complete... Um, that's our complete excuse for some of the individual moments and performances from him as well. He does need to improve in himself too. But it's a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. But, yo, Mad Dev, it's been yet another amazing chat. Um, big up to everybody that's locked in. Like we've already said, sub to both Goonie and Andrew. Links are in the title. We'll be back tomorrow. Arsenal versus Chelsea preview. I'm, I'm sure everybody's... Looking forward to that one. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And yeah, big up to everybody. Hit that like button. Subscribe. And as always, up the Chelsea. So heading over to Sam. This guy's already know what to say. Everybody head over there. And up the Chelsea. Up the Chelsea.